We're now going to move on to our next section, which is that of dealing with radical equations. So these are equations that naturally contain radical expressions, square roots, cube roots, and even things that have weird powers to them that <clears throat> still connect back to radical expressions. In order for us to do this, we're going to first talk about the power property. And the power property says that all solutions to your equation a equals b can be found among solutions to a to the n equals b to the n. Basically what we're saying is that you can raise both sides of an equation to the same power and whatever equation you get from there, whatever solutions you get from this guy, it's going to have to contain any and all solutions for that original one. It doesn't say that every solution to this works. It just says if there are solutions to this, you can find them here. Now, obviously we're not going to raise both sides to the zero power because when you raise something to the zero power, you get one. You know, except for zero itself, but that's a weird little guy. So in order for us to solve a radical equation, here are the five steps that we go through. The first step is to isolate a radical. Now I say isolate a, not the radical, because sometimes you have more than one radical in the equation. Once you have the radical by itself, you're going to apply the power property. You are going to be the one who chooses what power to raise each side of the equation to and you know what that power is going to be simply by looking at the index of the radical and that's going to be true for most of these radical equations that you come across. Now after you do that if you still have a radical left over you got to come back up here to step one and repeat the process. Isolate what's going to be hopefully just one more radical left and apply the power property again. Once all of the radicals are gone you're going to, you're going to solve the resulting equation. So whether it's linear or quadratic or whatever, that's going to be the equation that you solve. And once you have your solutions, you check them back against your original equation, just in case you come up with some kind of weird contradiction that leads to an extraneous solution. All right, so we're going to run through a couple of quick examples so that you can see that for the most part, these equations are not that bad. So the first one we have the square root of x plus 9 equals 8. So step 1 says to isolate a radical, and we've already done that. Step 2 says to apply the power property, so we need to raise each side of the equation to the power that's going to undo the square root. Now, even though there's not an index that's explicitly written, we understand that there's understood to be a 2 there. So that means we're going to raise each side to a power that matches that index. We're going to raise this to the second power on both the left and the right side of the equation. So when you square the square root, think about the square being mostly like an inverse operation to the square root. So the square and the square root will cancel out. You're left with x plus 9 on the left. And then on the right, you have 8 squared. And that's going to give us 64. And then from here, it's just a matter of you step by step working through solving that equation. This one is not really all that crazy, I don't think. You subtract 9 on both sides of the equation, giving you x is equal to 55. And it should be pretty simple to plug this back in to check your work. If I take 55 and I plug it in here, 55 plus 9 is 64, and the square root of 64 is 8. So yeah, we can see very easily that x equals 55 is the solution. All right, let's try another one. So let's look at 5 plus the fourth root of 2x minus 11 equals 8. Alright, so first things first is we need to isolate a radical. So this is the only radical we have. So to get this guy by itself, we need to subtract the 5 and move it to the other side. Please understand that the 5 is not connected to the radical. You've got the plus there which, which creates that bit of separation. So we have the fourth root of 2x minus 11 
equals 3. All right, so the next order of business is to get rid of the radical. Remember, we don't even think about the power property until the radical is by itself. And so now we want to raise both sides of the equation to a power that's going to undo the fourth root. Well, that fourth root, that index right there, tells you you need to raise both sides to the fourth power just like that. So when I apply a power of 4 to the fourth root, I just get the expression on the inside, just get that radic hand, 2x minus 11. And on the right side, 3 to the fourth power gives me 81. And at this point, we just have a nice linear equation to solve. So get x by itself. I highly suggest that you show each step along the way that way, if you do make a mistake, hopefully your instructor can see that, can understand that you knew what you were doing, you just made a careless mistake. Hopefully that's all it is. All right, finish solving this by dividing both sides by two. And x is equal to 46. All right, and again, checking this really shouldn't be too bad. If I plug in 46 up here, 2 times 46 is 92. 92 minus 11 is 81. The fourth root of 81 is 3. 5 plus 3 equals 8. So there we go. Get the radical by itself, apply the power property, and solve the equation. Don't forget to check.